again an experiment in electricity. You can see in the diagram there is a galvanometer. Now our aim of this experiment is also based on this galvanometer itself. Let us have a look at what is the aim of this experiment. Now it is to determine the resistance of the given galvanometer by the half reflection method and hence find out the figure of merit of the given galvanometer. Now students do you know what is a galvanometer or for what purpose do you use it? Mm -hmm. It's a kind of meter used to measure small amount of current. It is very sensitive to the changes in current. Now let me explain to you the basic circuit that you would require. Obviously there should be some source of EMF for that we are using cell E. Connecting it with key K1. Further on you will be connecting in series a galvanometer whose resistance you want to find out. Next to it will be a resistance box having high values of resistance. We will be denoting it by R. And finally it is connected to the negative terminal of the cell E. Now also in this setup you can see there is another resistance box S. But then it is different from R in the sense that it will be having very low values of resistances in it. Next to it is key K2 whose purpose is either to connect or disconnect the resistance box S to the galvanometer. This box S as you can see is connected in parallel with the galvanometer. Whereas the other resistance box having high resistance denoted by R here is connected in series with the galvanometer. Now basically to start with we will be only closing key K1 keeping the next key closed. Now to start with we will connect cell E by closing key K1. During the first part remember students the key K2 will remain open. So resistance S will not be included in the circuit. So the only part of the circuit which is there in the picture of part A is the series 1. Now you will be taking a high resistance from this resistance box such that the galvanometer shows certain deflection. Now you have to take care that the deflection in galvanometer comes out to be an even one for which you can easily adjust a suitable value of a high resistance R. Once you have received a particular deflection theta in the galvanometer you can switch on this current K2. Now as soon as you switch on the current in this by plugging on K2 this circuit shown in parallel becomes operator. Now since the current is passing through this resistance also the value of the galvanometer deflection will change. You have to adjust the value of S till you get half the deflection as you were obtaining earlier. So now by S you bring the deflection to theta by 2 value where theta was the original deflection. Having determined the value of R and S you can easily use the formula for the resistance of the galvanometer used Rg. It is simply equal to the product of R and S resistances divided by the difference of the two. Since R is greater, it is shown earlier. Once you get a value of Rg, 
for a particular value of theta or deflectional galvanometer, you can find out the figure of merit of this galvanometer, which is equal to EMF used in the circuit divided by the resistance R, which is a high resistance, resistance of the galvanometer, and again in the denominator will come the deflection obtained in the circuit. Excuse me, um, yes. what is figure of merit? Okay, the so figure of merit is a term which is related to the galvanometer that you have used. Remember students, this is the ordinary galvanometer that we have been using in so many experiments of electricity. The figure of merit means what is the amount of current that you require to produce a unit deflection in the galvanometer. Now obviously, if more amount is required to produce a unit deflection in the galvanometer, the galvanometer is not going to be a sensitive one. A sensitive galvanometer is the one which can show you a unit deflection even with the help of very small currents. So now, let us try to assemble the following circuit to find out the resistance and the figure of merit of the given galvanometer. Now, you can see the assembly of the entire experiment on this table. This is a galvanometer whose resistance and figure of merit we want to find out. Let us see where all it is connected. First of all, you can see that one of its terminal is connected to a primary cell. The next terminal of the cell is connected to a resistance box which has very high values. This we have denoted by R in the circuit diagram. The other end of this high resistance R is connected to key K1. Key K1 is further connected to the second terminal of the galvanometer. So, this is the entire series circuit which is connected through the galvanometer. Coming to the other part left, you can see there is some parallel arrangement also connected with the galvanometer. This is one end. This is the next key K2 connected to a resistance box having low value of resistance which we have labeled as S in the circuit diagram. In order to close this parallel circuit, we have connected the second terminal of resistance box S to the last terminal of the galvanometer. Now, let us start taking the readings. Excuse me ma'am. Yes. Why are, why are we not using this key? This key? Yeah. Okay, this is key K1. This is responsible for maintaining the current in the series circuit. As you know that if I do not include in the beginning any resistance from this resistance box, there will be a very high value of current which will be flowing through the galvanometer. If the current rises from zero suddenly to a high value, the needle will abruptly go to the last reading of the galvanometer. If this switch over is too fast, it may even break this delicate wire or the delicate needle of the instrument. So what I do is, I initially include a high resistance in order to limit the current through the galvanometer. That is why you can see now we will be taking out some high value from the resistance box R. I have taken 2000 plus 2000 again that makes to be 4000 and let's take another resistance 100 from it. So it is 2000 plus 2000 4000 plus 100 equal to 4100. Now as you said we can include key K1 in the circuit. So can you see the deflection here? 
what is that reflection coming in the galvanometer? It's 20. 20. Now, we also want this reading to be an even number. And 20 is an even deflection. So, you can take down the first reading of deflection as 20. Theta will be 20. Now comes the turn for including the parallel circuit. That is the second resistance box. Now I have to obtain the half deflection in this galvanometer. That is half of 20. I should adjust the value from this resistance box till I receive a deflection of 10 in this scale. So let us try it out. We are very near to it. Approximately 9 we are getting. Mm. I have taken out 50 ohms right now. So in order to reach 10, I will be just taking out a small resistance. It's showing 10 now? Yes ma'am. So now we have reached at the half deflection. And the resistances that I have taken out just now are of 50 and 10 respectively. So the total resistance taken from this resistance box are 50 plus 10, 60 ohms. Using these two values of R and S and the deflection 20 that we have got, we can easily calculate the resistance of the galvanometer. Similarly, for that particular reading, we can also calculate the figure of merit. For better approximation, still more values of R and S can be taken and hence a suitable value of RG can be calculated. So this includes both the resistances and we come over to the end of this experiment. Now the reading that we had taken just now in the experiment has been shown along with the calculations here. Now R is the high resistance that you had taken out, S the smaller resistance that you had taken out from the parallel apparatus. This is the product of both of them. This is the difference. This is the main deflection which we were getting as 20. This is half of it that we were getting by including the low resistance. Now using all these values, you can see, you can obtain the value of resistance of galvanometer Rg. Using this formula, the resistance comes out to be 6.09 ohms. For the same galvanometer, the figure of merit is given by this formula. Now the EMF that we have used is 1.5 volts. R and RG values are already known and this theta is the main deflection of 20. When you solve for all this, you obtain a value of nearly 1 into 10 to the power minus 5 ampere per division. So it implies I will require a small current of 1 into 10 power 5 amperes to produce a unit division deflection in the galvanometer. It means the galvanometer we have is a quite sensitive one. The same procedure can be repeated to get the average of figure of merit and the resistance of galvanometer. So this concludes with our experiment on finding the figure of merit and resistance of the galvanometer.